Hi, I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures, and we are far from home today down here in Cleveland, Mississippi at Air Repair. Pete Jones was nice enough to have us, and the reason that we're here is because of this airplane that you can see behind me. This is Leland Snow's first agriculture aircraft that he designed and built. There was actually, this is considered an S2, the Snow S2. There was a Snow S1, there was only one of them and from that came the Snow S2. This particular model is a 1959. It has obviously been completely restored and it is number 25 out of roughly 400 and it's the only one that's fully restored and flying. If you don't know who Leland Snow is, he's basically the pioneer of agriculture airplanes. After he built this came the Thrush and after that the Air Tractor. Now we did do a factory tour video of Air Tractor. If you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. At the end of that video, you also will learn a little bit more about Leland. Prior to Leland actually building any airplanes like this, the ones that were being used were not meant for the purpose of dusting crops. They were things like a Cub or a Stearman. They were already around and they were modified, where this was built specifically for it. Now some things that really surprised me after flying this as well as just looking at it are the fact that the hopper and that whole system is not really that much different than what we're using on our brand new air tractors today. The hopper's very similar, there's a gauge that works similarly to the gauge that I used to have in mind before I switched it over to an electronic digital readout. That's very similar. The hopper gate is really similar. The gear on this airplane is similar to the gear that you would have on the Thrush, which was what was built right after this, as well as the wings. When I sat in the cockpit on this and looked out at my wings, it really gave me the sense that this feels like a Thrush. They're just a short, stubby wing, and that's really what you get on the Thrush. The Air Tractor, that was a big redesign. That one has a longer wing and it's a lot skinnier. Another thing that really surprised me is how heavy the controls felt on this airplane. So just sitting on the ground and moving the stick to the left and to the right it was very heavy. The air tractor, I always feel like I can just put a finger on that stick and fly it like this. It's very light and extremely responsive. This one, not so much. Also, the airspeed on this is a lot less. So the motor that's on this is a Continental. It's a 670, which is 240 horsepower. It has seven jugs on it, and that's what's powering that entire aircraft. It's got a small hopper. So from what I can find, maybe you know more, leave it in the comments if you do, but the hopper's roughly about 125 or 150 gallons. However, speaking to a couple people, they said, they wouldn't put more than 80 or 90 gallons in it. I would probably agree with that because when you're taking off, it just doesn't really want to climb. It is not a rocket ship by any means. I was pretty surprised by it right when I took off and I put it into a climb. It's a steady climb, but it's not gonna happen quickly. Also, just working the field, it only goes about 80 or 90 miles an hour, kind of really sits right about that 85 mile per hour mark. Probably the most surprising thing to me is in my air tractor, when I pull out of a field, I can just pull that stick back and I mean the airplane just climbs. With this one, you can pull the stick back, but you bleed off airspeed like that. I mean, it just drops. And so you're not gonna climb three or 400 feet in a turn in this particular model. I kept the turns very low and flat, maybe 100 feet off the ground, 150 feet, and came around and entered back into my field. I also didn't have any weight on this airplane. The hopper's completely empty, and so there was nothing in it. I really couldn't imagine having a bunch of weight in there. The hopper does sit right behind the cockpit as opposed to the thrush and the air tractor where the hopper is directly in front of the cockpit and then the motor sits in front of that. So this was really interesting climbing into and sitting for the first time. Callie said, how's your visibility? And I'm only a few feet behind that motor. I've, I've never been so close to a motor or the propeller. I literally felt like I was on top of it. It's amazing visibility. Also, you can see that it is an open cockpit. That's the first open cockpit aircraft that I've flown and it was awesome. So I imagine it's probably maybe what it feels like to fly a Stearman, 
but it was really cool. I could fly something like that across country at 500 feet and love every second of it, even though I'm only doing about 85 miles per hour. Let's get a little bit closer to the airplane. I wanna show you the fuselage as well as the cockpit and some of the instruments that are found inside of that. As far as the fuselage goes, the air tractor, all of the panels on the exterior of it are metal. Now on the Thrush, the model before the air tractor that Leland designed, the tail on those are fabric, or some of them are. Nowadays, they're all metal, but the older ones in the 70s are still gonna be fabric. On this model, you have the fabric tail as well as the fuselage. So up to this point right here and back is gonna be fabric. On the very top, this is metal. And then from here going forward, all of that is metal. This is where the hopper's located. And then the wing is also all metal. Something you may notice about this is that this wing does not have any flaps on it. So you have your ailerons located right here. Normally, you would have flaps located on this section. This one doesn't have them. It makes flying fairly simple. You don't have to remember to put down any flaps when you're landing or anything. So kind of nice. And let me tell you, I was terrified to land this airplane. I did not want to be the one to ground loop it or wreck it or do whatever. And so I was very nervous, but it's all in one piece still. And actually lands very nicely. I was super surprised coming in to land. It was, and then the tail touched and it was extremely simple. I was really surprised. So glad to have it back on the ground. Now, if we climb up, we can show you the cockpit. Also, you can see on the outside of the cockpit that there is this roll cage. You're still gonna find that in the thrush and the air tractor. They still have that built in for safety. Like I mentioned, this is the hopper. Not a lot different from what you find today. You have your hopper lid, and then even the way that the gauge is measured in there to see how much liquid you have is still really similar to what you can find in air tractors today. Now, on the inside of the cockpit, basic engine instruments as well as flight instruments. And this is pretty much what I have in my air tractor. So you're going to have with the engine, you're gonna have temperature, fuel pressure, oil pressure, and then you're going to have your altimeter, airspeed indicator, and your tack telling you what your RPMs are. Again, not a lot different from what I have in my airplane. Big difference being that mine's a turbine. Also, you're going to have your ignition source here, both left and right. And then on the left side of the cockpit, you have your throttle. And that's pretty much all that you have as far as engine controls. That's gonna make it speed up, and slow down, there's not any type of constant speed prop on it. It's a fixed speed, so you don't have any prop handle and there's no mixture control. So on this, you have an on off for fuel. You have a wobble pump so that you can pressurize the fuel system when you go to start it up. And then you have an on off for the battery. Also over on the left side, just like today, you do have your gate control. So you can open and close the gate there as well as a spray handle. This one has been updated and we have some electronics in it. So we actually have a radio. We can talk to other traffic in the pattern, which is really nice. Other than that, pretty simple system. Again, this is number 25 of Leland Snow's aircraft, the Snow S2. I am blown away that I had the opportunity to come down here and do this, and I couldn't be more grateful. I wanna give a huge shout out to Pete Jones here at Air Repair. He took his morning and got this airplane out for us, made sure it had fuel and oil in it, ran me through the whole thing, and made sure that I was good to go before I took it into the air. Also, John and Angela Bird came down in a Satabria. Callie went up with John and got a bunch of photos of me flying this airplane. So if you see any of those photos, that's gonna be Callie taking them and John's flying the airplane. I'm super grateful for this opportunity and one that I will not be forgetting anytime soon. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or if you have anything to add about this, maybe you know some things that I don't, please just leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. You can always find us across social media at Ag Aviation Adventures. Now at the end of my videos, I usually say fly low, fly fast. However, this airplane was far from fast. So with this one, fly low and fly slow.